Welcome to Bedford High School in Bedford, New Hampshire, where tonight the top-ranked Lady Bulldogs of Bedford are going to host the Pinkerton Astros. Senior night here in Bedford, and tonight, Andrew, six seniors are going to play their final home game for the number one-ranked Bulldogs. So about ready to tip off here at the Bedford High Gym. The Pinkerton Astros ranked number two in Division One, taking on the number one Bedford Bulldogs. And let's see, who do we have? So Mia Roy is going to sacrifice her starting spot tonight so that Fillion, Shapler, McIver, Driscoll, and Dyer can start. There we go. Driscoll will jump center for Bedford against Brooke Kane. Driscoll winds up winning the tip, and we're about ready to go. Karina Shapler with the ball in the front court. Looks to the corner to Dyer. 17-foot jumper from the corner off the front iron. Rebound over to Sadie McIver. She brings it back out, finds Shapler up top. No score, 7.45 left in the first. We're just getting underway here at the Bedford High Gym. Bedford and Pinkerton, ball stolen there by D'Onofrio of Pinkerton. They ruled that she was out of bounds, a la Kevin Durant. And it'll be Bedford ball in the front court. Pinkerton, Pinkerton starting man to man in the half court. Fillion to Shapler, now back to Fillion, down into the corner. Sh uh, Fillion. Thinks about it, dribbles left, looks to Dyer up top. Dyer dribbles to the right over to the wing. Now down into the corner goes Fillion, dribbles, brings it back out. Loses it, gets it to Dyer. Dyer looks around for a second, now to Shapler. No score early, 7.14 left in the first. Shapler a bounce pass into Driscoll, up fake. Now a little six-footer, rattles around and misses. And on the rebound attempt, that's Alexa Dyer picking up the foul, and that is her first foul, it'll be Pinkerton ball. 7.07 .07 left in the first, no score. Get a little over the back there. Dyer trying to get that early rebound. Bedford's gonna start in half court man to man defense as well. Now Lemire with the ball, the point guard for Pinkerton. Over to Kane outside the three point line for the big six foot forward. Now D'Onofrio now down into Lassard. An air ball from Lassard. McIver with the rebound for Bedford. And She'll cross over dribble as she gets back into the front court. No score, 6.45 left in the first. Bedford and Pinkerton. Bedford ranked number one, Pinkerton ranked two. Driscoll dribbles with the left, the ball stolen there by Kane, who attempts to make a left-handed layup and is fouled in the process. She misses the layup, Driscoll fouled her, and she'll go to the line and shoot two. Lauren, you mentioned her size at six foot and she really handled well there in transition for a, you know, an interior player. She handled it well in transition, misses her first free throw though, does Kane. No score, 6.33 left here in the first quarter of play at Bedford High. Kane down to shoot her second, and the second one is good, and Kane has her first point, and so do we. One nothing, favor of Pinkerton. McIver gets the inbound pass. Now into the front court is Sadie McIver. Over to Fillion on the wing. Fillion outside the three-point line. Shoots a three, it's long. A rebound there, batted around by Karina Schapler. They rule that it was knocked out of bounds by Schapler. It'll be Astro Ball. 6-19 left in the first. one nothing in favor of Pinkerton. Lemire into the front court, dribbling left. Now she drives the lane, left-handed layup, bounces around and is good. First basket of the game, 6.08 left here in the first quarter. 3-0 in favor of Pinkerton. Now Schapler will get it over to Driscoll on the wing. She goes to drive baseline, kicks it back to Schapler. A little six-footer from Schapler, misses. And Pinkerton with the ball into the front court quickly. D'Onofrio to Lemire. Lemire out on the wing. Now she's up top. Now over to Kane. She'll dribble drive. Kick it back out to Lassard. And the shot from Lassard is long. Rebound there to Driscoll. Now Bedford on the fast break. Philly in a little razzle-dazzle behind the back. Can't finish the little six-foot fade. Pinkerton gets the rebound. Five and a half left in the first. Three-nothing in favor of Pinkerton. Lemire with the ball over on the wing, guarded there by Schapler. She goes behind the back, somehow maintains her dribble, going to the knees, and they caught Schapler with her hand in the cookie jar on that one. And it will be a foul on Karina Schapler, her first. Bedford's picked up three 
in the early going. 5-17 left in the first, 3 nothing. Fillion will come out of the game for Bedford. Mia Roy replacing her. Roy in. Now D'Onofrio guarded there by Mia Roy. Dribbling with the right hand, a crossover. Now she's got it up top. Now over to Lemire, she drives the lane. She's at the free throw line, kicks it out to the corner to D'Onofrio, who drives the lane, kicks it out to Kane, dribbles right. Little finger roll for Brooke Kane, and she misses for Pinkerton. And they say that Kane was fouled by Driscoll, and uh-oh, she's got two. Yeah, tough assignment, Claire drawing it early, matching up against Brooke Kane. And, uh, you know, Bedford's going to have to use their depth to try and contain Kane tonight. 3 nothing Pinkerton, now it's 4 nothing. Kane has made her second free throw. She's got two points, Bedford with a little bit of a change. McIver and Schapler out. And Stevenson and Barnard in. Now Kane's second free throw also good. And Bedford chasing five, they trail five nothing. 4.57 left in the first, Roy into the front court. Stevenson over on the far side. Driving baseline as Stevenson with the right hand, kicks it over to Dyer now to Fillion up top. Her 18 footer rattles around and now rush pass there from Pinkerton. Roy had an opportunity on a layup, that one rattled around and missed. Now Roy has another chance to shoot, ball knocked away by Pinkerton. Now Bedford trying to settle things down a little bit. That one caught Lauren. every part of the rim except the bottom. Who put the lid on that rim? Oh boy. Roy and, and Stevenson both just had gimmies, you know, for their traditional success and just can't get it to fall tonight so far. So with 4.30 in the first, Bedford trailing five to nothing, they take a timeout. And yeah, that was a nice steal there by Mia Roy in the backcourt. Looked like an easy layup and it caught every part of the rim and just didn't fall. Yeah, you know, and right before that play, I was I was already thinking there's a lid on the hoop. And then <laughs> it was a gift-wrapped turnover to her right at the block. And I thought, okay, here we go. This is a perfect momentum changer. But somehow it, it slipped out of the rim, and Stevenson missed a short one as well. So now Bedford is still scoreless three and a half minutes into the game. This is kind of like deja vu, though. We saw the same thing the other night against Memorial. Bedford was... Scoreless early, down 10-7, and then basically just stepped on the gas, and that was that. So Bulldogs will inbound. Mia Roy's got it over on the wing. Now an entry pass there to Driscoll. She got tangled up with Alicia D'Onofrio when they ruled the ball went off of Driscoll's knee. It'll be Pinkerton ball, 423 left in the first. Lemire, the point guard, five foot one senior. She's a captain, dribbles to the left into the lane, brings it back out. Now gets it over to Mahoney. Back to Kane outside the three-point line. A little dumped into Lassard. Now into Lemire, who brings it back out to the three-point line. Four minutes left in the first quarter. Five-nothing Pinkerton. Nice crossover from Lemire. Little left-handed fadeaway misses. The rebound there to Dyer. Gets it up to Stevenson in the front court. Thinks about a three-pointer. Thinks better of it. Draws the ball back out. Now Stevenson tattooing a dribble. Gets it over to Roy on the wing on the far side. Now it'll be to Dyer, now to Barnard, now on our side to Fillion, now back over to the far side to Stevenson. Tries a reverse layup, it's blocked and winds up out of bounds. Bedford ball, 337 left in the first, five nothing Pinkerton. Well it's a step in the right direction. Nice pump fate by Stevenson and drive. She just got blocked right under the basket. Now Roy dribbles it in, kicks it back out. Now looks down low to Barnard. And now up top to Roy, barks out a couple things. Dyer has it up top for Bedford. Dribbled right now, picked up her dribble over to Stevenson on the wing on the far side. To Fillion on the three-point line. She misses her 19-footer and Kane gets the rebound. Quickly back into the front court. The crowd wanted to travel there as Kane had a high dribble and it kind of crested on her hand for a second. Ultimately went out of bounds on Bedford, and that's the ruling we got from the refs. Yeah, she made an awkward pass that went off Stevenson's shin. So Pinkerton, quite fortunate to retain possession here. 5 nothing, Pinkerton, 3-10 left in the first. Allie Morgan into the game, replacing Alexa Dyer. And Pinkerton trying to inbound, they do so, get it to 
D'Onofrio who gets hand checked there by Allie Morgan into the game for all of about three seconds, picks up a foul. And now Pinkerton will inbound. A little bit of motion there, trying to get this ball in bounds. Mahoney, the one inbounding, finally gets it into Kane. Tries a reverse layup, misses. The rebound there to Barnard, knocked out of her hands. And Pinkerton steps out of bounds. So it'll be Bedford ball under their own basket. Five nothing. Three minutes left in the first in favor of Pinkerton. Acrobatic attempt there by Kane. Solid def defense by Barnard to force her into that tough shot. Stevenson on the near side with the ball, gets it over to Mia Roy on the wing on the near side. Now looks down low to Morgan, thinks better of it. Stevenson has it on the near side outside the three-point line. Now to Morgan outside the three-point line. A couple shuffle stutter steps and gets it over to Fillion. Now they get a little bit of space that they're looking for. To Stevenson down low, she tried to beat Jesse Ames off the dribble and instead a foul called there on Ames will be Bedford ball underneath their own basket. I dare say this is Bedford's longest scoreless streak of the season. It is a drought. 2.33 left here in the first. 5 nothing Pinkerton. Now from the corner is Stevenson. She misses. Rebound picked up there by Fillion. She gets another rebound and is fouled there. And they, I believe, say that that foul was called on Amanda Lemire, and that is her second. Well, when everything else fails, get to the free throw line, and that's what Allie Fillion has done. No doubt. Fillion's first one off the back iron, misses. Still 5 nothing Pinkerton, 2.27 left in the first. You were saying? <laughs> get to the free throw line and good things will happen. Yes. Now the second one from Fillion. That one rattles off the front, off the back, and in. There it is. And there we go. 5-1. to one. Bulldogs trail Pinkerton. Lemire guarded closely by Morgan, follows her through the screen. Morgan is doing a nice job tussling after that ball. Loose ball, forced by Morgan, and the jump will go to Pinkerton. And a nice job by Allie Morgan on D, creating a little bit of energy there. Late sub there for Pinkerton. Lemire coming out of the game with two fouls, and into the game for her is Isabella Brulette. We'll see if that Plays a role in the game. Lemire is the point guard for Pinkerton. Ball inbounded there to Ames. Now looks up top over to Kane on the near side. A bounce pass hurried down low to Ames. And Ames knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Bedford ball underneath their own basket. 2.05 left in the first. 5-1 to one Pinkerton. And dribbling into the front court is Morgan. Over to the corner to Barnard. Barnard thought about getting it to Stevenson up top, thought about filling in down low, instead settles for Stevenson about 30 feet from the hoop as Bedford resets. 5-1 Pinkerton, Mia Roy fakes the three-pointer, drives the lane, thought she had a little fade away, she shot it, missed. Pinkerton gets the rebound, quickly back into the front court is Pinkerton. Now Jesse Ames, they'll call a travel on that one. Bunny hop in the pee patch right there. She went up to take a shot, before she had dribbled. A little stutter step. Close call. Close call. That student, one went in favor of the home agreed. squad. Yeah. Yes, they did. <laughs> Five to one, Pinkerton. Morgan gets the ball over to Stevenson on the far side. And what have we here? Looks like it was a block, I would venture. Called on 14, Madison Mahoney. That's her first foul, the fourth so far for Pinkerton. 5-1 Pinkerton, 126 left in the first. Allie Morgan to inbound underneath the Pinkerton basket. Trying to figure out her best option. Instead gets it to Mia Roy about 30 feet from the basket. Roy pulls up from about 17, then gets it out and around to Fillion by way of Barnard. Fillion in, now Roy shoots a three and that gets the bottom of the net. Bedford trails by one, 5-4, 108 left in the first. Big three ball there from Mia Roy, just when you needed it. And Pinkerton now out of sync. Jesse Ames has had a couple turnovers on passes, and this time was looking for Brooke Kane. Brooke Kane over on the left wing. Kane had just vacated that spot, and Ames' pass was to the invisible Astro. 
little miscommunication there. And here we go again. Bedford with that rough start, but has a chance to be leading at the end of the first quarter. Now to Fillion. She shoots from 18 from the corner. That shot misses. And the refs, after a brief conference, will agree. Pinkerton ball. 52.3 left in the first. 5-4 in favor of the Astros and the Bulldogs in their full court press. Ball inbounded to Mahoney. Guarded there by Fillion. Knocks it away to Barnard. And Barnard misses a layup. Bedford has a chance at it. Fillion goes to save it underneath the Pinkerton basket. And they will say she was not in bounds. It'll be Pinkerton ball there. And Bedford again will be in that full court press. Now Pinkerton trying to break the press. And they do. D'Onofrio dribbles into the front court. Guarded there by Morgan. Now Kane driving the lane with that left hand. She's in the key. Kicks it over to the corner for three. And that three-pointer good out of the hands of Sophie Riccio. Seven, or check that, that was a two. Seven to four in favor of Pinkerton. 20 seconds left here in the first. And a foul called away from the ball. Moving screen on Bedford. If I'm correct on that one. And Pinkerton will inbound 19-9 left here in the first. Seven to four in favor of the Pinkerton Astros. Careless inbounds pass to Jesse Ames. Allie Fillion had a chance to steal it. Or check that, Mia Roy had a chance to steal it. It looked like she knocked it out on Ames as Ames was sliding out of bounds. The officials didn't see it that way. 16-5 left in the first. 7-4 in favor of Pinkerton. And a foul on the inbounds play. Kendi Barnard with that foul. That is her first, the seventh for Bedford. And it looks like they're in the bonus. Pinkerton will shoot one and one. That's a tough position to be in now for Bedford for the rest of the half. Pinkerton's going to be going to the line on every foul. It'll be Brooke Kane going to the line. She's made three of four from the charity stripe so far. Her first one is good. Now four of five for Kane. All four points for Kane coming from the free throw line. Pinkerton on top, eight to four. 15 seconds left in the first. Kane's second free throw is also good. She's got five and it's nine four in favor of the Pinkerton Astros. Mia Roy will head over to the trainer real quick. It looked like she might've gotten a cut and into the game for Bedford to replace her is Lizzie Stevenson. Or check that, Bedford's going big now. They have Jonas and Barnard both in. Opportunity to take the last shot here. Make sure that going into the break, they're at worst down five. A little conference down below. Bedford Athletic Director Corey Parker conferring with Bedford coach Sue Thomas and one of the officials as well. Coach doesn't look terribly thrilled. It's one of these times I wish I could read lips. Right. <laughs> it <laughs> seems like they must be discussing some of the conduct of the student section. That would be my best guess. Student section is reacting in a somewhat boisterous manner, understandably. Are they going to try and limit what signs and photographs the, the students can display. Student section has a lot of, uh, of paraphernalia over there, a number of signs. Also, balloons, you name it. And when you tell somebody not to do something, it's usually when you get them to do it. Morgan dribbles into the front court. Bedford trails 9-4, to four, filling in with the ball on the far side. Now a pass down low to Barnard. They say it was off the hands of Barnard and out of bounds. Ball to Pinkerton. They'll get the chance at the last shot. Six and a half seconds left, leading nine to four. Mahoney to inbound for Pinkerton. Gets it to Kane. Kane dribbling with the left hand. Five seconds left in the first. Jonas winds up getting the loose ball. Kane shoots a deep three after Jonas's pass is knocked away by Pinkerton. Kane shot it from about 30. It was an air ball and that will end the first quarter of play, mercifully, if you are a Bedford Bulldog supporter. 
Yeah, great start for Pinkerton. You know, Kane really showed her athleticism there, scoring five on at the line, uh, making two steals. And like we talked about earlier, you know, Bedford's going to have their hands full with her. But they need to, you know, look inside their own huddle right now and get things sorted out on both ends of the court. You know, offensively, they got a bunch of decent shots. Yes. There was just a lid on the basket throughout the first quarter. They only made one field goal. It was Mia Roy's right. three-pointer when she got a wide-open look. Uh, and then Fillion had the one free throw. Um, you know, defensively, they, they did change it up a little bit, going with the full-court press with about yeah. a minute to go. And on, right on that first time they did it, uh, Kenny Barnard had an opportunity to score after, she, after a steal. Didn't convert, but you know, that's what Bedford has to do is you know, they've got to just mix it up, make some changes until they can get something that will click. And they're getting good looks. They're getting certainly open shots. It's just a matter of not getting those shots to fall. Not a whole lot you can do about that, short of keep playing good D, get a little bit of fast break points here and there. So Bedford will start the second quarter with the ball, trailing 9-4, to 7.52 left in the first half of play. Lizzie Stevenson dribbles underneath the basket, gets it to Fillion out up top. Morgan to reset, ball fake, now dribble drive, and a little fade away, rattles around on the rim. Barnard fights for the rebound, but doesn't get it. It'll be Brooke Kane bringing the ball up before giving it to the point guard, Lemire. Guarded there by Allie Morgan. Ball over to Kane, shoots about a 15-footer from the elbow. That one misses. Rebound to Fillion, Bedford with the ball. Stevenson will drive the lane before kicking over to Barnard for a 15-footer. That one misses. Now scramble for the loose ball. Finally knocked away there by Stevenson. Morgan winds up picking up the ball, getting it to Dyer in the corner for two. And the Bulldogs now trail nine to six. Was Pinkerton's coach asking for a backcourt violation? She was. Huh. But Bedford didn't have control. Uh, no, nobody had control of it. So nine to six in favor of Pinkerton. 6.53 left in the first. Kane gets it over to D'Onofrio. She's got it up top. Spins around there, guarded by Fillion. Just outside the three-point line to Mahoney. Over to Kane up top. Crossover dribble for Kane. Drives the lane and winds up being fouled by Barnard as she goes to the hoop. And you really get the feeling the only points that Kane is going to get tonight are going to be by way of the charity stripe. There's not going to be a whole lot of easy buckets for her. Right. And sometimes that's a good strategy against a bigger opponent, you know, one of the post players. But Kane has shown that you know, she front rimmed that one, but she was five of six at the line in the first quarter. So I don't think that's going to be Coach Thomas's strategy throughout the night here to put Kane on the line. And now Kane's second one falls in as well. So she has half a dozen points all by way of a free throw. And now it is 10 to 6 in favor of Pinkerton. 639 left here in the first half. Mia Roy all patched up. We'll bring the ball into the front court for Bedford. Looks around, finds Dyer, now gets it over to Fillion on our side. Now down into Stevenson, who bangs one off the rim, misses, and Bedford winds up picking up the rebound. Stevenson kept it alive. Fillion, a little one-handed shot, gets fouled, and the Bulldogs have a chance to surprise, get within one if Fillion's able to make this free throw. Yeah, you know, we talked about trying to get to the line when you're having a scoring slump. The other thing you can do is go get an offensive rebound, and Allie Fillion did just that. Fillion misses the free throw. Dyer gets the rebound, and Bedford right back at it again on offense. Driving the lane is Roy. She kicks it outside to Stevenson for three. That one missed. Bedford scrambles for the rebound. Lemire picks it up for Pinkerton and winds up getting it over to Mahoney. Takes it into the front court to D'Onofrio. Outside the three-point line. Guarded there closely. Left-handed three from Lemire. Lemire misses the rebound there to Stevenson. And a foul call there on Madison Mahoney as the two of them jockey for the rebound. And the Bulldogs will get the ball after the foul call there on Mahoney. Her second, Bedford trails Pinkerton, 10-8, 5.58 left in the first. Six team fouls on Pinkerton, so Bedford will head to the line on the next foul. Now Roy will dribble into the front court, pulls it back out, gets it over to Stevenson on the far side to Barnard, now to Dyer to Fillion, down low to Stevenson. Well executed ball movement, Stevenson made a little six footer with her back to the basket. And the ball game is tied at 10. 5.35 left here in the first half. 
Pinkerton with the ball, going left to right on the radio dial. Ball batted away, now Jesse Ames will drive the lane. They say that Ames was fouled as she was attempting to take the shot. She may have initiated the contact. Yeah, they gave that one to Stevenson. The referees are calling it closely tonight. There's already been 15 fouls called in only 11 minutes of action. So Jesse Ames misses her first free throw. 10-10 tie, 522 left here in the first. Half, I should say, not quarter. <laughs> and the second one from Ames is good. The 5'9", sophomore forward makes a free throw, gives Pinkerton an 11-10 lead. Bedford quickly with the ball in the front court. Over to the corner to Roy, thought about a three, thought better of it. Now pulls it back out to Barnard. Over to Fillion, just outside the three-point line, swings it around to Roy as she curls through the lane. Lauren, that's three possessions in a row where Bedford created their offense by setting a pick on the far block and having a guard use it to get open in the paint. Stevenson missed her first layup attempt on that play, scored last time, and then Mia Roy gets fouled on the same play there. It's just that little bit of separation that you can create with that screen makes all the difference in the world. And swinging the ball around quickly. Mia Roy makes the free throw. That is her first of the game. She's got four points. We have an 11-11 tie. And now Bedford had the chance to take their first lead of the game. Missed the free throw. We're still tied at 11. Pickerton quickly into the front court. Alicia D'Onofrio was looking down low to Ames and airmailed her. It'll be second and 10. Bedford ball, 5.02 left here in the first half, tied at 11. Coach Buskey could just shake her head there. That's it. It's an error of commission, not an error of omission. She had her man open down low, thought better of it, but now Bedford moving that ball around. Fillion winds up with it down low and is fouled on the shot. Coach Buskey of Pinkerton did not like that call either. The call, foul call there on Sydney Lassard. That is her first, and now Fillion will go to the line and shoot two with a chance to give Bedford its first lead of the game. We're tied at 11. 4.51 left in the first half. <laughs> Fillion bangs in her first free throw of two. She's two of four on the game and has four points. 12-11 Bulldogs, 4.51 left in the first. In case you're just joining us, Bedford ranked number one in New Hampshire Division I. Pinkerton ranked number two. Fillion's second free throw, crystal clear. She's got five, Bedford's up two, 13-11. The Bulldogs in their full court press. Mia Roy harassing Kane as she brings the ball across the timeline. Kane dribbling with the right hand, gets it to D'Onofrio, crossover dribble now, swings it over to Ames. Ames will look to Lassard just outside the three-point line. Now over to Kane on the far elbow. Kane drives the lane. Her six-foot fade misses. The rebound there is corralled by D'Onofrio, and she is fouled in the process by Allie Morgan. That's Morgan's second. And going to the line and shooting two is Alicia D'Onofrio. D'Onofrio's first is good. That's her first point of the game. Bedford leading 13 to 12, 429 left in the first. We didn't think this one was gonna be easy. No, no, <laughs> and it has proven not to be. And the second one from D'Onofrio, also good. She is two of two from the stripe, and the game's tied at 13 apiece. Stevenson brings the ball quickly into the front court for Bedford, now to Roy in the corner. Roy thought about a three and shuffled her feet a little bit too much before she started dribbling. So Bedford turns the ball over. Pinkerton will inbound from the far side. Bedford still in that full court press. And again, the combination of D'Onofrio and Ames She's been targeted twice, missed twice, and Bedford gets the ball off that turnover. Now Stevenson, a three from a hard side. And Lizzie Stevenson with a big three for Bedford that goes up 16-13. Quickly into the front court is Pinkerton. Now a three taken over there by Pinkerton. The answer right back to Sophia Riccio. And that ties it at 16. Now Bedford into the front court is Roy. Now Roy over to Fillion, back to Roy. Now to Stevenson on the far side from the elbow. That one misses. Bedford gets the board, does Fillion. She can't get 
her put back to fall, and now Pinkerton right back into the front court. Pass telegraphed over there by Brooke Kane, stolen by Stevenson. Dribbles into the front court on the fast break. And we have a foul called, unclear on who, the foul called on, they said three, is that correct? That's called on Mia Roy. Well, that's a surprise. Didn't look like she was too involved in that play. And Pickerton will go to the line and shoot two. We're tied at 16, three and a half left in the first. I'd already marked the foul down for red three, Brooke Kane. I thought they made contact on the Bedford ball handler. But the referee saw it differently. So the first free throw from D'Onofrio is good. She's now three of three from the line. It is D'Onofrio. Those are her only three points. And now the second one from D'Onofrio. Also good. She has four. Figured it on top, 18-16. 11 of... Pinkerton's 18 points from the foul line tonight. Now a little entry pass down low to Stevenson. Makes that runner. And Stevenson's got seven, and we're tied again at 18. 3.15 left in the first, and Ofrio dribbles into the front court, pulls it back out, gets it over to Ames on the near side. Thought about Lassard cutting through the middle. Now Ames will get it over to Lassard on the near elbow for Pinkerton. 18 apiece. Just out of three minutes left here in the first half. Brooke Kane dribbles in. The ball stolen there by, from Kane by Roy. And they'll say a jump ball. And the jump ball will go to Pinkerton. Perfect double team by Roy. She timed her approach for her right when Kane spun towards her. And Roy was able to create the jump ball. Now Kane will inbound for Pinkerton. Gets it over to the corner to Lassard. Lassard for three. It's long off the back iron. Roy gets the long rebound. Now will dribble into the front court does Mia Roy before pulling it back out to Stevenson. Now Roy has it on the far elbow. Looking down low, thinks better of it. Coach Thomas barking at the officials or barking at the Bulldogs. I'm not quite certain. Now Bedford will tussle over that loose ball and again a jump ball. And they will say Bedford ball because the arrow was pointing Bedford's direction. We have had three ties, three lead changes. And a lot of excitement. That much is certain at this point. 18-18, 224 left in the first. 18-18 with 18 fouls called as well. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't do much for the pace of the game. Stevenson will inbound to Roy. Dribbles to the middle with the right hand behind the back in the lane, a little floater off the iron. And they will say a push after the shot, this time called on Brooke Kane. So Kane was unable to get away with the push on that one. And it was called on the floor, but Pinkerton has nine team fouls, so Roy will shoot one and one. Bedford trying for their second lead. Big free throw there, always crucial to make the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Mia Roy has five on the game now. Bedford on top, 19-18. And now Roy with her second free throw, also good. Big one there, she's got half a dozen. Bulldogs on top, 20-18. 2-18 left in the first. The inbound to Brooke Kane. Looks to Jesse Ames. Instead, she keeps it herself, does Kane, as she crosses the timeline. Now to Ames on the near elbow. Ames a stutter step, gets it over to Lassard. Now to Kane in the corner. Dribbles with the right into the lane. Ames from about 18 from the corner on the near side. Now fight over the rebound. Pulling away as Dyer gets it to Fillion on the fast break. And they will rule that Fillion was fouled on the pass. It doesn't matter if she was fouled on the shot or the pass. Bedford's in the double bonus. Fillion will go to the line and shoot a pair. That's right, that developed into a two-on-one for Bedford, and Fillion uh, you know, forced the issue there, drawing the contact right by the basket. Fillion with five on the game, three of five from the stripe. And misses that one long. Now into the game for Bedford is Barnard replacing McIver.
Bulldogs on top, 2018. 151 left in the first half. And the second one from Philly and misses as well. Rebound to Pinkerton into the front court is the six foot tall forward Kane, guarded there by Barner. Nice job defending her. However, she goes with the right, little right handed layup for Kane, her first bucket of the game. She's got eight, and we're tied at 20. Now Roy with the ball for Bedford, quickly into the front court. Fakes a three, pulls it back down, filling in over to Roy on the far side, dribbles with the right, now to Barnard on the far elbow. Gets it to Dyer at the near elbow, now swinging around that pick is Roy. She's unable to convert the layup. Pinkerton gets the board back into the front court. D'Onofrio with the ball, swings it back out to Kane. Kane for three for Pinkerton, and that one is good. And yet another lead change. Pinkerton now with a 23-20 lead. Kane with 11 after that three, and she looks like she's warming up. Bulldogs with the ball, 55 seconds left in the first. Dyer with the ball on the near side to Fillion. Bedford trailing by three. Roy with a three, that one off the front iron. Nice job by Fillion there to scramble among the trees, get the rebound. Keeps it alive, gets it to Roy. Roy thinks about shooting from the free throw line, spins around instead, gets it over to Fillion who shoots a little one-handed runner just inside the free throw line and she is fouled. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Another offensive rebound there by Fillion, so key. The way she's going, she's gonna have double digit rebounds by the end of the night. She may already. <laughs> Fillion's first free throw misses. She is now three of eight on the game. Little cold streak, she's missed her last three. Now the second one from Fillion is good. She writes the ship. Bulldogs trail 23-21 in a full court press. 30 seconds left here in the first half. Bedford trailing 23-21. Philly in closely guarding Pinkerton. Now to Riccio, now to Ames up top. Gets it back over to Lassard. Looks to Kane. Kane about 25 feet from the basket, dribbling with the right hand. Guarded there by Stevenson. Gets it to the baseline and the shot there missed by Riccio. She gets her own rebound and is fouled on the putback. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Five seconds remain here in the first half. Bedford chasing two. They gave that fire, that foul to Alexa Dyer, her second. Fouls now mounting quickly for Bedford up and down the roster. And Riccio makes the free throw. That gives her six points on the game. And it gives Pinkerton a 24-21 lead. The second free throw from Riccio also good. She now has seven. The Bulldogs will inbound. Mia Roy with five seconds left in the first. See if she can drive the lane, get a shot off. Blocked, picked up there by Barnard. She tried a little layup from underneath the hoop, but unsuccessful. And the Bulldogs in very unfamiliar territory here at halftime now, trailing 25-21. Back here at the Bedford High Gym, the Bulldogs of Bedford trail, that's weird to say, trail the Pinkerton Astros 25-21. This one, a matchup of one versus two. The Bulldogs came in 16-0, and Pinkerton came in 14-1. So we had a chance to talk to Chris Pantazis from the Legendary Times earlier and get his insight. He's very familiar with the Astros program but it really sounds like Bedford's gonna have their work cut out for them over the last 16 minutes. Yeah, you know, he mentioned Lemire having three fouls, Pinkerton's point guard, so if she stays out of foul trouble and, and Kane keeps up the offensive vers versatility, you know, Bedford's just gonna have to start connecting on the offensive end. Pinkerton now going right to left on the radio dial as Lemire gets a download to Kane. Kane will Get it back to Lassard. Lassard, a little underhanded shovel pass to Kane. Now to Lassard in the corner. Bulldogs trail 25 21, 740 left here in the third quarter. Ball to Lassard over on the near side. Dribbles to the middle. Might have lifted up her pivot foot a little bit. Instead, over to the corner to D'Onofrio. And Pinkerton, a loose ball right near midcourt. They pick it back up. Kane is guarded there by Stevenson. Dribbles left, dribbles right. Now dribbles baseline before getting it over to Lemire, and now they found the shot that they like. Mahoney misses a 15-footer. 
Kane goes up and over Stevenson to pick it up. Might have been over the back, just maybe. I'm now seeing it with my heart, not with my eyes. But well, I was glad they didn't call that one because you're right. It could have been called over the back, and they've they've called that type of foul tonight. But if they let that one go, that's that's better for the players. So the foul called there on Stevenson. That is her second. Kane will go to the line and shoot two and makes the first. Gives her an even 12 on the game. Pinkerton on top, 26-21. Now Kane's second one, also good. She's got 13. Can and be demoralizing to spend a minute on defense and give up give up two points after all that effort. So let's let's see if Bedford can keep their energy up here to start this third quarter. Driscoll dribbles through the lane with the left hand. They say that she was hand checked there by Brooke Kane. And that is Kane's second foul. So you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Bedford will inbound the ball underneath their basket. Filling in, trying to figure out to whom she should inbound. And winds up getting it to Stevenson on the far elbow. Stevenson, a little right-handed dribble. Now over to Driscoll. Driscoll to Fillion. Fillion, a ball fake, looking around, trying to see if she can find somebody who can get a little bit of separation. But Bedford's really having a hard time with this Pinkerton D, trailing 27-21. 6.30 left in the first. Now Fillion driving baseline, gets it back to Dyer on the elbow. Now to Driscoll. Driscoll, a right-handed fadeaway one-hander, gets the bucket. And the Bulldogs trail by four, 27-23, 6.20 left in the third quarter. Very nicely done over the six-foot Kane. Kane with the ball on the near side in the corner. Dribbles to the right, now dribbles back to the left to Lassard from the corner. And Lassard's three, rims around, and no good. Rebound there to Driscoll. Bedford right back into the front court is Stevenson. And now guarded there is Fillion. Right up top, gets it over to Dyer. Bedford doing their best to move the ball around a little bit. Over to Roy on the far side on the elbow. Thinks about a three, thinks better of it. Bulldogs trail 27-23, 5.42 left in the third. Now to Dyer, swings it back over to Driscoll. Her three is off the rim. Nice job there by Stevenson to collect the rebound for Bedford. And she'll drive the lane, will Lizzie Stevenson, until she runs into Kane and brings it back out. Bulldogs trail 27-23, 5.20 left here in the third. A little entry pass there to Driscoll. Dribbles left, dribbles right. Now Fillion for three. That one misses off the board. Now Roy picks up the rebound after Fillion's miss. And Bedford will reset their offense. Bedford's turn for a minute-long possession. This one's been close to two minutes. It's like a chess match to Dyer on the far side. Now to Fillion swinging around that screen. She gets the hoop and the harm. And the Bulldogs can close within one, 27-25. Fillion thus far on the night, four of nine from the stripe. She hits that one, five of 10 is Allie Fillion and the Bulldogs trail 27-26. 4.52 left here in the third quarter. Lemire to Mahoney, Mahoney will Dribble for Pinkerton, loses the ball briefly. Guarded there by Driscoll to the corner to the left hand of Lassard. And she answered right back with a quick three. Her first points of the game for Pinkerton, which leads again by four, 32-26. Allie Morgan about to check in for Bedford. Filling in dribbles with the left hand, little layup, misses. Nice rebound there by Dyer. And then the ball stolen from her by Lassard of Pinkerton which leads Bedford 30 to 26. Mahoney tattooing a dribble for Pinkerton into the front court, tried to drive right, guarded there by Driscoll, now gets it over to D'Onofrio. Spins around, does Alicia D'Onofrio, and a little handoff to Lemire, who ran with it for about half a second before getting started. And a travel, correctly called there, yes. Glad we cleared that up. <laughs> 30-26, Pinkerton on top of Bedford, halfway through the third quarter. Allie Morgan into the game for the Bulldogs. Gets it over to Stevenson on the near elbow, now to Fillion. 
Looks to Roy to her left down to the corner. Now to Morgan. Stutter step, drives the lane, pulls it back out, gets it to Driscoll on the block. And Driscoll shot from the block, no good. Kane with the ball being trapped down there by Fillion. And gets out of there and Pinkerton quickly into the front court. Lassard for a three for Pinkerton. Misses badly. And Bedford gets the ball on the fast break. Nice outlet pass to Mia Roy. Roy to Stevenson. She finishes. She'll go to the line. Try to make a three-point play out of that one. And Bedford will try to close it again within one. And the foul went on Kane, her third. That was a textbook fast break by Bedford. And a huge turn of events to have Kane get her third here about midway through the third quarter. Stevenson tries to finish the three-point play, instead misses the foul shot. She's got nine on the game. Pinkerton gets the rebound, dribbles into the front court. Bedford trails by two, 30 to 28. Now Lemire dribbles into the lane. Rainbow misses. Picked up by Stevenson on the board. Now dribbles into the front court to Stevenson. And as she went up for a shot, the ball is stolen from her. They say a jump. And it'll be Bedford ball down there. Yeah, excellent play by Lassard there to force the jump ball when Stevenson was about to go up for the layup. I would have bet on one of two things, either a foul or a straight steal, not a jump there. Yeah, you don't usually see it in that context. Brooke Kane just checked out of the game with those three fouls. So Bedford tried to take advantage of that one. Driving the lane is Mia Roy to tie the game for Bedford on a left-handed layup, and that lane opened up big time without Kane down there. 2.52 left here in the third quarter. The Bulldogs and Pinkerton tied 30-30. The shot from D'Onofrio, a big three. And that puts Pinkerton up three. 33-30. Yet another lead change on that big three by D'Onofrio. Bedford with the ball in the front court. Driscoll outside the three-point line over to Roy on the far elbow. Now thinks about a three, she'll consider driving the lane. Instead gets it to Allie Morgan who drives. Looked like she was either kicking it to the corner or shooting it. But a foul called. Morgan will go to the line and shoot two. Yeah, I Seemed thought she was passing that off to the corner. But she's gonna go to the line for two free throws. She's smarter than we are. She went right to the charity stripe. You gotta sell it when it's close. And that she did, Allie Morgan. Bangs in the free throw. That is her first point of the game. Now the second one from Morgan. Misses long. Nice job sealing off there by Lassard, keeping Dyer out of there. And the rebound goes to Pinkerton, leading Bedford by two, 33-31. Lemire guarded there by Mia Roy in danger of a five-second charge. And very quickly puts the ball on the floor, dribbles with the left. Drives the lane, the ball knocked away from Lemire and out of bounds. The ball goes to Pinkerton underneath their own basket. And now Sue Thomas calls a timeout for the Bulldogs who trail Pinkerton 33-31. Yeah, Roy got her hands on that one. Nice defensive play. It just seems like Bedford can't quite get over the hump you know, even with Kane on the bench, Denorfio De had he sort of answered the first question of who's going to step up, step up with Kane on the sidelines. And she hit that three to give Pinkerton the three-point lead. And Bedford's, they've really picked it up here in the third quarter uh, with actually converting some of their shots. Their, their shooting percentage is much higher. But they, they need to get ahead here um, to start to open it up a little bit. Well, it seems like every time Bedford has the game tied or a chance to take a lead, a free throw is missed, something along those lines. And it's usually a D'Onofrio or Riccio or Kane hitting a three. And you feel like the momentum swinging back to Bedford, and then it swings right back the other way. The door just slams shut. Yeah, to, to your point, Bedford has missed eight free throws tonight. You know, if they'd converted all those, they'd be up by six. Uh, but they just haven't... Haven't, haven't been able to convert at a, at a high rate tonight. And on the other side of the coin, uh, Pinkerton has only missed three. Kane is eight of 10. D'Onofrio is four of four. Pinkerton to inbound, and 
they do so. That three-pointer is missed by Pinkerton, knocked out of bounds there, and it'll be Bulldog Bull trailing 33-31, 156 left in the third. Let's see if they try and find Driscoll in the post. Morgan to Fillion in the corner. She misses a 15-footer. Pinkerton gets the ball back. A quick possession, to say the least. And now Pinkerton getting heckled by the Bedford student section, counting their passes. Like this is Cameron Indoor Arena. The Bulldogs trail 33-31. 129 left here in the third quarter. Lemire will shoot a three there. Misses off the front iron. Driscoll, nice job boxing out. Picks up the rebound, gets it to Morgan. And Morgan, the Red Sea parted for Allie Morgan. Yes, it did. Boy, oh boy, now we got a 33-33 tie. I like that timeout by Coach Buskey. That was a defensive breakdown. And, you know, we just had a timeout 45 seconds ago. But this is an important juncture of the game. You know, Bedford finally tied it up again. Kane's still on the bench. And like you said, I mean, that was the parting of the Red Sea. You know, there's just a complete breakdown, lack of communication. And the way that Bedford's been pushing it in transition in the third quarter, they, can't, they just can't have that. All the wings were covered. <laughs> yeah, great, great job shutting down the wings. The ball was not covered. Bedford had no chance minor, of, hitting, minor, minor detail. of hitting a three there. No, God no. Tie ball game, 114 left in the third. Not the foul fest that we saw in the first half. Bedford in their full court press. Allie Morgan doing a great job on D. Lemeyer breaks the press. Now to Lassard up in the front court to Mahoney. She'll drive baseline. And they call a charge. A beautiful job done there by Allie Fillion. Mahoney drove the baseline. Fillion was set. Mahoney went right through her. The official wasted no time in calling it. And Bedford gets the ball. 101 left in the third. A chance to take a lead. Tied at 33. Fourth foul on Mahoney there, too. So Mahoney's got four. Kane's got three. Ball kicked around to... Dyer on the far side, now back to Barnard. Morgan will drive with her left hand into the lane, kicks it back out to Roy. Roy spins a couple times, looking for somebody to kick it off to, and she kicks it to Morgan. Morgan will drive with the right hand, high off the glass is Morgan's. It misses. Bedford, as this thing pops around like a whack-a-mole, winds up getting the rebound. Mia Roy drives, kicks it over to Dyer. Now Roy has the ball up top. Bedford settles down. 22nd left here in the third. Tied at 33. Barnard with the ball up top. Looks to Dyer and it looks like Bedford's going to go for the last shot. Morgan a little turnaround eight footer. Misses. Now Fillion off the rebound. Picks it up. Now high off the glass alley. Fillion makes it. Bedford with three chances and they take the lead 35-33. Uh, Pingerton dribbles into the front court. But that will end it in the third quarter in Bedford with an unlikely lead on top by a pair, 35-33. Yeah, Bedford got the spurt they needed there at the end of the quarter. The crowd got into it a little bit when, when Fillion drew that charge. And those two late buckets give Bedford the first lead that to me feels like it could be convincing. Even though it's only a two-point lead, They've got all the momentum. They're playing much better in the, in the second half. Uh, I like the way that they're uh, shaping up here after halftime. They played very hard in the third quarter. A lot of energy there. And of course, the tone of the game changed when Kane left. Pinkerton was on top by four when she left with their third foul. So there's a six point swing over the last three, three and a half minutes. It's a big change in the game. Yeah, you've seen it, the impact on, on both ends. Like you said, the, the very possession after she left, Bedford got the penetration. There was no one there to stop Bedford at the basket. Offensively, uh, D'Onofrio Dino, did hit that three, but they have struggled since then. And now, you know, Kane's checked back into the game to start the fourth because they need, they need her in a big way. So seven lead changes, six ties in this one. We're, Bedford's on top, 35-33. Might have been a moving screen there called on Pinkerton, and that foul not called. Brooke Kane gets the rebound after the shot missed by Lemire. And the foul called there on 
Alexa Dyer, that is her third. Looked like a strong defensive play from this angle. A lot of ball, quick, quick whistle on that play. Instead, Kane will go to the line. She will make her ninth free throw in 11 attempts. She's got 14 points on the game. Bedford on top, 35-34, and Kane again makes one. We're tied at 35, our seventh tie here of the game. Roy dribbles with the ball onto the front court for Bedford. And a Bedford turnover there. She just lost track of where Allie Fillion was on the court. The ball goes out of bounds. Tied at 35, 7.42 left in the game. You don't see that usually between Roy and Fillion. They usually connect and communicate well. The Meyer into the front court for Pinkerton, dribbling with the left hand, guarded closely there by Mia Roy. Now gets it to Kane. Kane just outside the free throw line. A little turnaround, Jay misses. Roy picks up the air ball. Now Bedford quickly into the front court. Roy to Stevenson in the corner. Now back to Roy up top, tied at 35, 7.15 left in the game. Great pass by Mia Roy. A little bounce pass as she drove the lane to Fillion. And the Bulldogs again on top, 37-35. That's the Roy-Fillion connection we're used to seeing. It certainly is. Kane driving the lane. I didn't mean to rhyme. She was fouled. And they say it was Lizzie Stevenson on the block. That is her third. You know, if the refs are going to call it close, you might as well penetrate and try and create contact. That's, that's just what Brooke Kane did. And she missed her first free throw in about 45 minutes, it feels like. She has a pattern. She misses one, makes five, misses one, makes five. I wouldn't foul her again. Any coach will take that pattern. Yep. Makes that one. Bedford clinging to a lead by the slimmest of margins, 37-36. Seven minutes left in the game. Now over to the corner to Stevenson for three, misses. Ball batted around down low and off of Pinkerton. Bedford ball underneath their own basket. A big turn of events there after the miss by Stevenson. Morgan will inbound for Bedford. Gets it to Driscoll, a little rainbow from Driscoll, misses. Now batted around, Kane will pick up the rebound and Bedford will get it after the loose ball. Now the ball to the key to Morgan. Morgan misses about an eight footer and now Pinkerton with the ball into the front court. Trying to take a lead, Bedford on top 37 to 36, six and a half minutes left in the game. Rare unforced error by Kane there, but Bedford couldn't take advantage. Lemire driving the lane. They say that she was fouled somewhere along the way. It looked like she was fouled perhaps right after she caught the ball. And the foul called there on Allie Morgan. That is Morgan's third. Morgan, Stevenson, and Dyer. Oh, check that. Wow, Morgan now has four. So Morgan's got four. Stevenson, three. Dyer with three as well. Now Pingerton will inbound the ball. 6.19 left in the game, trailing Bedford by one. Over to Kane in the corner. Kane winds up kicking it over to D'Onofrio, who's stuck in the lane, can't get rid of the ball, and they say three seconds. I think that was the call. She was right there on the baseline as well. She had her heels right on the lane, right inside the key, and just couldn't get out. Just wasn't aware of where she was. Bulldogs on top, 37-36. Mia Roy behind the back, kicks it to the corner to fill in. Now back to Roy for three just off the back iron. Rebound goes to Stevenson, gets it to Dyer on the near side, now to Roy. Roy drives the lane with the left. Kane blocks it, knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Bedford ball, 549 left here in the game. Bulldogs lead it 37-36. Terrific help defense by Kane, showing her quickness to be able to keep up with Roy's driving attempt there. Now Roy inbounds to fill in, shot missed, batted around, picked up there by D'Onofrio, now to Kane in the front court. Kane will drive the lane, bounces off of Driscoll, gets it back out to Mahoney, now to D'Onofrio, drives the lane with the left hand, and the rebound from D'Onofrio is good, or check that, the layup from D'Onofrio is good. She now has nine points, and Pinkerton has a 38-37 lead. Our ninth lead change in the game, little Entry pass there to Stevenson, misses the shot. The ball knocked away by Stevenson. And Bedford somehow emerges from that scrum with the ball, trailing by one. 
Stevenson with the left hand, drives the lane. They say she was fouled on the ground. The sixth foul here in the second half for Pinkerton. So the next one will be a one and one for Bedford and a substitution for the Bulldogs. Driscoll out, Barnard in for Bedford, trailing by one, 38-37. Fourth foul on D'Onofrio for Pinkerton. Inbound pass to Barnard. Banks it from about four feet. Candy Barnard gets a big bucket, her first of the game, and the Bulldogs take the lead, 39-38. Pinkerton quickly with the ball in the front court. D'Onofrio up top, guarded there by Dyer. Now crossover dribble, kicks it over to Lemire. Left-handed shot from about 15 is good. Big bucket there from Amanda Lemire. And now Bedford quickly with the ball into the front court is Mia Roy. Over to Stevenson on the near side. Now to Barnard, kicks it around to Philly and three from the corner is good. Big bucket from Ali Fillion to give the Bulldogs a 41-40 lead. I think that might have only been a two. Yep, I kept looking for the signal. I think they only gave her a two on that. And we have a great angle from over here. Bulldogs on top, 41-40. Kane with the ball guarded there by Stevenson. Great D, Stevenson. Lemire misses a three. Barnard gets the rebound. Bedford with a chance to build their one-point lead. Roy driving the lane, pulls it back out. Fillion again misses and rebound Pinkerton, 3.54 left in the game. The Bulldogs on top, 41 to 40. This is like two heavyweights going Ooh. back and forth. This Boy, is this exciting. Is Kane with the ball, feet on the three-point line, guarded there by Barnard, a little stutter step. And they say a foul somewhere away from the ball. On 20, Lizzie Stevenson, that is her fourth. 3.38 left in the game. Bedford with five team fouls here in the second half. Pinkerton to inbound the ball underneath their basket. And what did we have? Five second call. Great defense by Bedford. Great defense, but that is the time of the game. You cannot afford to make that mistake. You have to have, like you said, the clock in your head. Cardinal sin. Particularly on the offensive end. So Allie Morgan quickly back into the game for Bedford. She'll play with four fouls. Morgan over to Roy on the near side, on the elbow. Bedford on top, 41-40. Now an entry pass to Morgan, who is fouled. And who is that? Is that foul number five on Madison Mahoney? She's gone for the night. And Bedford's in the bonus. Morgan shooting a one and one. Yeah, before that play, both Pinkerton wings had four fouls. Mahoney and D'Onofrio, and you know, Bedford has two players with four fouls, two key players, Stevenson and Morgan, and Pickerton makes the first error there with the player fouling out. Morgan misses the free throw, the ball batted around a little bit, and they'll say off of Bedford, it'll be Pinkerton ball. Big opportunity missed there for the front end of a one and one with a one point lead. 41-40, Bedford on top of Pinkerton. 3.20 left in the game. So if you're just joining us, stay with us. You don't want to miss the end of this one. The Meyer into the front court, over to the corner for Pinkerton. Lassard's shot is blocked there by Barnard, and Bedford gets the ball back. Morgan will cruise on into the front court, dribbles with the left hand, kicks it over to Fillion. Now back down low to Barnard. Her hook shot blocked there by Kane, and Kane will try to get something going to the front court on the fast break. Nice job, hustle play there by, was it Driscoll or Barnard that got hit with the foul? I'm not sure. Driscoll. It is Driscoll's third foul on that one. And Kane will go to the line yet again, shooting two. Really great aggressive drive there by Kane. Creating just enough contact with her hip to get the referees to call the foul on Driscoll. And a nice job by Driscoll to ensure that if she was gonna foul her, she wasn't gonna get the and one. Bulldogs on top of Pinkerton, 41-40. Brooke Kane to the line, she's shooting two. That makes her 12 for 15 tonight with that make. I'd take 80%. This one will give him the lead. And the game tied, and Kane misses, but Jesse Ames somehow gets the rebound for Pinkerton. She's trapped in the corner. Will she be able to do anything? She was not but Coach Lonnie Buskey called the timeout 
preserve that possession for Pinkerton. So ready for this, at this point we have had 11 lead changes and eight ties. This is a legit one versus two <laughs> matchup. <laughs> is it ever? So here we stand, Brooke Kane broke her pattern. She was miss one, make five, miss one, make five. Regardless, she's still shooting 75%, 12 of 16 from there. She's got 17 points in the game, does Kane. And we're tied 41-41, 247 left in the game. Yeah, she's been the absolute difference maker for Pinkerton with her point total, her efficiency at the free throw line, her defense, you know, she had a, a big block right there on, on Barnard. And now it's Bedford's turn to turn up the intensity on defense. Pinkerton with the ball, they will inbound from the far side. And tough time getting it in, finally get it to Lassard. Now to Kane up top, guarded there by Barnard. Little entry pass, bobbled and knocked away there by Allie Morgan. Morgan doing a great job fighting for it. She's got four fouls and she's playing with reckless abandon. And the loose ball, did they say a jump? Indeed, they said a jump and the ball goes to Bedford. Stevenson will check back in, replacing Barnard on senior night here at Bedford High School. Tied at 41, 235 left in the game. Offensive, defensive substitution there. Steven Stevenson has four fouls. Coach Thomas didn't want to play her on defense at this juncture of the game. She checks back in on the offensive possession. So Morgan over to Roy on the elbow. Now Roy looking around, trying to figure out what she can do. Puts the ball on the floor. She's going to have to get it to somebody, and indeed she does. Gets it to Lizzie Stevenson. Stevenson puts the ball on the floor. Over to Fillion on the far side in the corner. Fillion looking around, trying to get a little bit of spacing out of this deal. Now to Driscoll. Over to Morgan on the near side, on the elbow. Morgan drives to the baseline, over to Driscoll. Now to Stevenson on the far side. Thought about a three, thought better of it. Drives in, pulls it back out. Tied at 41, just under two minutes left in the game. Stevenson with a drive high off the glass. Basket good, Bedford up by two, 43-41. That gives her 11 on the night, Lauren. What a great penetration move where she faked it and then went hard the second time. Ames with the ball for Pinkerton on the near side, dumps it down into Kane. Nice little feathery five-footer from Kane. Bedford quickly with it, coming back the other way, tied at 43. Now Stevenson with a big three, puts Bedford on top, 46-43. I lied, it was a two. Regardless, a huge shot, another lead change, another tie. Boy, oh boy, 45-43 Bedford, one minute left here in the game. Ames with the ball up top, guarded there by Fillion. Swings it over to Kane on the near side. Kane dribbling with the right. Little fake with the shoulder. The shot blocked by Claire Driscoll. Bedford's got the ball. Into the front court is Roy. Roy dribbling with the left. Will Pinkerton foul. We will see. Stevenson with the ball. 47 seconds left here in the game. Bedford on top by two. Morgan closely guarded there. And a timeout called by Bedford. Leading 45-43 with 42 seconds left. Hey, you don't get to keep the timeouts after the game, so you might as well strategize. Yeah, Coach Thomas wanted to make sure that they make smart decisions here and draw that foul like you're talking about. You know, up by two, they don't have to shoot. There's, there's no shot clock. So they've got to, you know, put the pressure on Pinkerton to go ahead and commit a foul. Pinkerton fortunate that Bedford called that timeout because D'Onofrio was about to foul Morgan. D'Onofrio has four fouls. Uh, they need her on the floor if they're going to make this comeback. So, ready for this? At this point, 12 lead changes, nine ties. <laughs> That's a lot of that for 32 minutes of basketball or 31 yeah, really minutes is. of basketball. Ever since the first few minutes, it's been a really tight game. Ne neither team can break away. And you keep getting... Big, big time players stepping up in big time opportunities. Absolutely. Love to see it. All right, so here we go. 41.8 left in the game. Bedford on top, 45-43. Lizzie Stevenson to inbound. Stevenson will look around. Now gets it to Fillion in the corner on the near side. Fillion dribbles with the left. 
She is outside the three-point line, gets it over to Morgan on the far side, again outside the three-point line. Dribbling with the right hand is Allie Morgan, now dribbling back left. Dribbling into the lane is Morgan, kicks it back out to Mia Roy, and Roy is fouled there by Kane, and that is Kane's fourth foul. Yeah, Coach Buskey obviously instructed her, her team to try and either get a steal or draw the five-second count when it was a, unable to do so, so Kane had to commit that foul. Nothing bigger there than making the front end of a one-and-one. One. That was money. Mia Roy does it. Bedford is up three. We'll see if they can make it a two-possession game. 46-43, make it 47. Bulldogs up 47-43, 21.4 left. Well, that's one of the Bedford seniors, Lauren, looking like she'd been there and done Ooh. that before. She most certainly had. Ice water running through her veins. Stepped up to the line and hit both those free throws with confidence. And couldn't have come at a better time for Bedford, who's really struggled at the free throw line tonight. It has been a strange night for Bedford on offense. Usually we see a lot of pretty even distribution of scoring. At this point, Fillion, 16, Stevenson, 13, Roy, 10. So you have three of them accounting for 39 of 47 points. Yeah, and you know, you, you typically you look to your guards to, to convert at the line. That's where Bedford has struggled tonight. You know, the Bedford players other than Roy are only six of 14 at the line today. Roy, though, is five of six herself. It's a big difference. So if you're Bedford at this point in the game, the one that you're really thinking about the most is Brooke Kane, the one that can take the ball into the hoop. If you're Pinkerton, you want to get a bucket as yeah. quickly as you can, quickly foul, hope a free throw is missed. We'll right. see if they execute that strategy as well. So Pinkerton to inbound, Bedford in a kind of a modified press back here, trying to keep the ball out of Amanda Lemire's hands. Kane gets it, dribbles into the front court. And she's dribbling with the right, trying to drive the lane, instead unable to. Ten seconds left here in the game. Ames with the ball, dribbles toward the middle. Ames gets it over to Lassard. Pingerton's got to hurry. Kane will shoot a three. Instead, partially blocked by Stevenson. Bedford gets the ball, and that is going to do it. The Bulldogs, number one, take out number two, Pinkerton, 47 to 43 here on senior night at the Bedford gym. Wow, just a great finish. Excellent defense by Bedford in the last possession. So with that said, we wanted to uh, thank the crew here at WBNH, Bedford 105.1 for all their hard work and sacrificing the Thursday night to join us and thank our guest, Chris Pantazis, as well as Coach Sue Thomas. And with that said, thank my broadcast partner, Andrew Hansen. Thank you for joining us as well. Bedford on top tonight. The final score after 12 lead changes in nine ties. Bedford emerges on top, 47-43. to 43. You listen to Bedford Bulldog Sports on Bedford 105.1 and WBNH.